You line up. They come in 335 hitting as a team that's 14th nationally. They're 11th nationally not base percentage. And that first pitch is in there for a strike to Ali Newland as we get underway at 606 here from Thibodeau. Newland again first team all SEC a season ago. She bounces one towards short and it is under the glove of Guazda. That'll likely go down as an E6. And LSU reaches. That's something you can't afford to do against an offense this prolific. Hand them free bases in a sense. Now, it's not the easiest play in the world, but that's one you figure your shortstop should have. And so an error there. That's the 28th committed by a Nichols defense. Actually, the third fewest errors committed in the conference entering today, but their fifth in fielding percentage overall. Sierra Briggs, a bunt, and it goes foul. This is the 40th meeting between LSU and Nichols. The Tigers have won 38 of 39. The only Nichols win came in 1998. Now 34 straight LSU wins since. Briggs, a very good bunter, lays one down perfectly. Only play for Yost to go to first base. And that's a good throw to get her by about half a step for out number one. Newland advances to second base as Briggs gets a sacrifice hit. So Briggs with her fourth sacrifice hit of the year. Newland into scoring position. And now Taylor Pleasants taking ball one. Pleasants, a fifth year grad student. You got a lot of experienced players in this lineup today for LSU. In fact, they have six grads on the roster. And all of them are in the starting lineup. That's inside. Did it hit her? They say it did. It was an off speed pitch, and it just kind of sank in. Looked like near her foot. Didn't look like a whole lot of contact. We watched this again. This has been the issue for Molly O this season. Is hit batters. She's now hit 22 in 71 in the third innings. It's a very high rate. Raylene Gutierrez takes ball one. And that's foul back. So first and second, and just one out for LSU. Mentioned they're an offense that hits 335 as a group. Gutierrez is certainly a big part of that, hitting 366. Five homers, 14 driven in. Actually, 24 driven. That's a good off speed. And it's one and two. Molly Yo trying to get her first strikeout today against one of the better hitters in the SEC. One two pitch. That's it sharply toward short. Backhand snag. Throw to third. Oh, they say safe. Kraus couldn't get the foot down in the bag. A nice backhand stab by Guazda. But they are loaded up for LSU with just one out. Another play that boy it looked like the Nichols infield should make. And not the easiest play in the world. But all of a sudden, base is full, just one out for an LSU team that thrives in this kind of spot. Hitting nearly 400 as a team this year with the bases loaded. First pitch is in there for a strike to Kelly Lynch. Lynch takes a strike, going two. It's so a couple errors in this first inning on Nichols. Bases juice, just one out. Lynch, who came over from Washington. On an 0-2. Thought about chasing, didn't go outside. She spent four years in Seattle. Remember, Washington actually beat McNeese in that regional in Seattle last year. And it's a regional where McNeese had him on the ropes. Washington had to rally for a huge seventh inning to come back and win. 1-2, and now 2-2. Two and two. Lynch for the season hitting 308. 
She is two for two so far this year with the bases loaded, and that's what she's got right now. Two, two from Yoda Lynch. Chased a pitch that was gonna hit her had she moved the bat out of the way. And they may actually call that strike three. I think they may. Now, if she swung the bat there and got hit, but it didn't hit the bat, that becomes a strike yet. This is what they're gonna talk about. Our home plate umpire is Hoy Cook. First base is Stanley Carey, third base Robert Byrd. The question here is if the ball hit the bat. Because if it doesn't and you swing and the ball hits you, it, it counts as a strikeout. It really becomes a matter of if the pitch was fouled off or not. And that's what Beth Torino was arguing right away. Watch this again. Now, I don't know if that was the bat or her, or her hand, and they're gonna call her out. That's a strikeout. That's one of the most unusual strikeouts you'll ever see. I'm not saying it's the most unusual, but you do not see it very much where you get hit by a pitch and it goes down as a strikeout. So that is a gigantic second out. Beth Torina's not happy. I assume she'll get the explanation that the ball never hit her. I think her argument there is that the pitch hit her in the hand, which is part of an extension of the grip on the bat. But when you commit to a swing and the bat doesn't make contact with it, it's a strikeout. And so that's a huge second out, and Molly O and out away from wheeling out of a jam. Here's Petty. That's down low for ball one. This would be the ultimate Houdini act for Molly O in an inning where her infield has done her no favors. I mean, she has pitched well, gotten a couple of ground balls. Nichols could be out of this inning already. Penny enters hitting 381. The 1 0. And now it's 2 0. Molly O does not walk many. She came in with 16 walks against 38 strikeouts, but we mentioned the hit batters have generally been the problem this year. Situation where you got to be very careful on Carly Petty. It'll be a 2 0 with two down in the top of the first, and the base is full for the Tigers. And now it's 3 0 and in danger of walking in a run. On deck would be Mackenzie Rudity, who is actually an even better hitter at 329 with some home run pop. She's hit three long balls. Penny has yet to go yard this year. 3-0. There's a strike. So again, a ball here walks in a run. LSU in its series at Missouri over the weekend. Again, they only won one of three. They scored first in all three games. 3-1. And that's popped up into left fields. Over for it. Champagne. And she's got it. And Molly O pulls the Houdini. LSU's Raylan Chafin. Junior right-hander from Bossier City, Louisiana, misses ball one to Claire Sisko. Chafin went to airline high. She's got a 2-2-7 ERA this year and 11 appearances and eight starts. Been outstanding so far. 1-0. That's downstairs, 2-0. She did struggle at times against Missouri over the weekend. Pitched in the game on Saturday. Went two and two thirds. Now none of her runs allowed were earned, but did allow four hits. Be a 2-0 to Cisco. That's not close either, and it's 3-0. It's a Nichols team that doesn't draw many walks. 67 is a group so far this year. That's about two and a half per seven innings, which is Bottom third of the Southland Conference, but a patient at bat here to start for Cisco. Who comes in at 289. 3 0 from Chafin. And that's a four pitch walk to start things off. Missed inside. So Cisco walks. And now Reagan Heflin will dig in. Heflin, a sophomore from Richmond, Texas. I mentioned her as a newcomer. It's not really a newcomer as much as someone who's new in her role. Only played 18 games last year. And there's the first strike of the outing for Raylan Chafin, and it's 0-1. Heflin hitting 303. That's 27 hits and 89 at-bats. To put it in perspective, she was one for eight all of last season. 0-1. Down and away. 
She was all state first team at a high school. Great time all district, a multi-sport athlete. Led her team to a state championship in volleyball as well as softball over at Fort Bend Christian High School in Richmond. 1-1 one, one from Chafin. That's on the hands, looped, foul. Just over the head of Maddox McKee. So it'll be one and two. And Heflin will try to protect here with two strikes. Here it is. That's sent out to deep left center field. Breaks back and makes the catch just on the warning track for out number one. Now it is very hard to get a ball past Briggs. Even if you hit one that looks like it's going out of the park and that's more of a easy out for her. Again, she is a back-to-back -back Gold Glove Award winner, which doesn't happen very often in general. She is the first back-to-back -back Gold Glove Award winner in softball history, collegiate or professional. And a pretty impressive effort at LSU. This one on the hands of Vandenbaud, who fouls it back. She actually committed an error in their game against Missouri on Sunday. That was her first one in about her last 130 games. Didn't commit a single error her prior two seasons. Vandenbaud, meanwhile, hitting 345. Five homers, 19 driven in. The 0-1, swing and a miss. Some good heat that time from Chafin, who comes in with 43 strikeouts in 46 and a third innings of work. Let's see if Nichols can get something cooking here. And 0-2 from Chafin. Chopper towards third, gloved by McKee to second for one, back to first, got it! A double play, the 17th turned by LSU this season. They came in leading the SEC in 12th nationally in double plays. 8-0 and 5 in Baton Rouge as McKenzie Rudity leads off and takes outside for Molly Yo. Prior to the start of this season, Nichols had actually been within a run in two of the prior four meetings. They'd been within two runs, three of the prior five. Now they've had their chances to snap this losing streak, and now they've a shot at home today. That pitch is in there for strike one on Rudity. 7-8-9 here for LSU in the second. Molly Yo worked around a bases loaded one out jam in the first. 1-1. One, one. That is inside, it's 2-1. and one. Rudity is a native of North Carolina. She is the only North Carolina native on a team that has players from nine different states. Fouls one away. The most populous state for LSU is Louisiana with six players from there. They've got five from Georgia, five from Texas. Nichols actually has 14 players from Texas on the roster. Mentioned Yo being a native of Cypress, Texas. 2-2. Two -two. That is sent out down the left field line and is slicing foul. Well, you mentioned LSU hasn't been to a Women's College World Series in OKC since 2017. Feels like forever, because Beth Torina was going there every year, it felt like, at a stretch of time. They went to three straight, 2-2, two -two, and that one hit Rudity. That's a second hit banner today for Molly Yo. So another base runner for LSU. Defense, meanwhile, for Nichols is as such. Riley Rutherford behind the plate. You got Kraus, Guazda, Cisco, and Poche. Third to first around the horn. Poche and Kraus, both all conference players a year ago. There is no all defense in the Southland, but both of those players could have been on that list too. And then Champagne, Heflin, and Anderson make up a speedy outfield that has a lot of range. Going to have to have a lot of range against an LSU offense that can spray the ball all over the fields. Now, the Tigers do not hit a lot of home runs, and now we're going to get a visit out to the circle. So out goes K. 
Kat Frick. She's in year two with Justin Lewis. Did a sensational job last year with the pitchers. I mean, they have turned this program around for the better in a hurry. After a stretch of time where they were a little bit down. Remember, Nichols went to three straight Southland Conference tournament title games, or if you want to call it the elimination games, to win a championship and, and couldn't get over the hump. But after that, there were a, a couple of lean years. And Justin Lewis came in and did a sensational job last season. Guy has been a lot of, around a lot of winning at Fresno State. He did have a stint in the south on previously at Corpus Christi as well. The Colonels last year going 27 and 22, 13 and 11 in conference play. There's a 15 win improvement, nine win south in conference improvement. 1 1. That is a chopper right side. Gloved at second by Cisco, and our only plays the first base. So they get the out there, up to second into scoring position goes Rudity. And one away for the nine hitter, Maddox McKee. First pitch to McKee and is in there for strike one. True freshman from Montgomery, Texas. She was hit, the she actually uh, was one for four against Missouri in the series over the weekend. Made just one start. Off the plate, one and one. McKee's been one of those players to fill in for some of the injured Tigers throughout the year. She was a two-time Texas State champion at Lake Creek High School. One, one, that's up and away now, two and one. I remember with the injury to Coffee, you know, their outstanding third baseman, things had to shift around a bit in the infields. And so McKee has moved into that third base spot. Well, they've shifted around some others as well. And she's done an outstanding job. Gonna be a 2-1 from Yo, swing and a miss. Some good movement that time. And now it's 2-2. Two and two. Be the 35th pitch up coming from Yo. On a 2 2. And is slapped down the left field line. Fair ball. Around third base. Rudity. And she'll score. And LSU strikes first. It's an RBI double for Maddox McKee. Gets her second RBI of her true freshman season in Baton Rouge. And seventh right to LSU takes a 1 0 lead to the second. This is a really nice piece of hitting. Goes the opposite way. Just a little slap down the left field line. And McKee, who entering that at bat, had been 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position, gets her first career hit with a runner in scoring position. Top of the order, Allie Newland. Grounder to short. Tough play for Guazda, and she throws around at first base. 2 what? So once again, LSU scores the first run. And it's something they are awfully accustomed to doing over the course of this season. And now Sierra Briggs. That's a good pitch at the knees for strike one. Oh, one from Yo. Tried to go to the inside corner and just missed off the plate. One and one now. Briggs has sack bunt her first time. Fourth sacrifice of the year. An LSU team that does not sacrifice a ton. 1-1. One, one. It's outside. It's 2-1. and one. Part of the reason is they have so many hitters who don't strike out a lot. In fact, they average the fewest strikeouts per game in the entire SEC, right around two and a half per. So Beth Torina's got confidence in her players to swing the bat and move runners over that way without bunting. 2-1. Briggs thought about chasing, didn't offer. You got Taylor Pleasance on deck, three-time All-SEC performer over the course of her now five-year career. Remember, the 2020 season cut short due to COVID, so 
A lot of fifth year players in this LSU roster have stuck around. Big 3 1 pitch coming here from Yo to Briggs. And that is drilled down to deep center field. It is gone. Sierra Briggs, a two run blast. And LSU grabs a 3 0 lead. It's only her second home run of the season, but it produces a three run second inning for LSU. In Briggs, and went four homers as a sophomore, two over the next couple of years, March 13th. Misses downstairs to Taylor Pleasance to start off her outing. Sierra Briggs just did a two run homer. And an LSU team, which I mentioned, has hit the third fewest homers in the SEC, actually, fourth fewest, just got their 25th of the year. Briggs, by the way, with her 10th career home run. Pleasance takes a strike on the outside corner, two and one. She was hit by a pitch her first time. Molly Yo hit two batters, so she's now hit 23 on the season in 72 and two thirds. 2 1 pitch, and off speed is downstairs. Now it's 3 and 1. There's just not a Easy out in this lineup as you would expect. Pleasant's actually sitting on 42 career homers and is tied for the fourth most in LSU history. 3 1. And that's up and away. And Pleasant's has reached twice. Done it on the hit by pitch and now a walk. And they will face Raylene Gutierrez with. One on and two outs. And the, the big key for Nichols trying to limit the big innings, which is obviously much easier said than done. Gutierrez hits a soft one toward short on a hop. Guazda and a good rifle throw to first base to retire Gutierrez for the final out of the second. Explode off the bat to chase down everything in the gaps as well. Pretty routine play there. This one is a little jam shot and foul ground and a diving catch by Carson. What a play laying out in foul ground for out number two. That is outstanding work from Carson. To get to that one. Went full extension. And the grad transfer from Michigan who battled injuries last year, showing that she is all the way back. Only her 15th start this season. That could be on Sports Center tonight. Keep an eye out for it. Dan -na -na, Dan -na -na. Let's put it out there. Banners Abby Anderson. So Nichols still seeking its first hit. They've only had one base runner. Which was the leadoff walk to Cisco. Anderson takes a strike. They're working the outside portion of that zone. Been a pretty wide zone so far for Hoy Cook. And it'll be a 1 2 from Chafin. Looking for her first strikeout. And it's a chopper to short. Pleasant's up with it on a hop. And it works perfectly into the glove of Gutierrez. For out number three. A one, two, three, second inning for. And one on Sunday by a run to avoid the sweep. So four straight losses before a win Sunday. They are 25 and four. The Colonels are sitting at 17 and 14. Banner here is Kelly Lynch. Struck out her first time on a very strange sequence where she was actually hit by a pitch but swung. And they deemed the ball never hit the bat. And it was rolled a strike out. It's 2-0 now. Avery paid it on for her second inning of relief. Came on to replace Molly Yo. It'll be a 2-0. And that is downstairs. Now 3-0. Colonels did beat Southern Miss last time out last Wednesday, 7-6 in nine innings. That was a thriller. 
3 0 is down low. That's another walk. Now that has been the problem early on and I think the story of this game yeah Briggs hit the home run and McKee had that nice piece of hitting for the double down the left field line but for the most part it's just been too many free passes so far for a Nichols pitching staff that coming in had been the second best in the South and not walking people but they had actually hit the second most batters in the country. So a walk drawn by Lynch. Beth Serena goes out there and brings on a pinch runner. And Michaela Walker is going to come on a pinch run. There's a strike to Carly Petty. Carly Petty on an 0-1. And that's down low. A ball and a strike. Looked like Walker kind of slipped going back towards the first base back. It'll be a 1 1. Hard hit to second. This could be two. The flip for one. The turn by Guazda. Not in time. That's a very speedy penny down the line. So they get the forest play at second base. Colonels have only turned seven double plays all year. That's the third fewest in the Southland. But they do get the forest play at second for out number one. Kenzie Rudity takes a strike. She was hit by a pitcher first time. That's hard hit, foul. And it's 0-2. Look, this is still very early on in the game. And the key here for Nichols, you got to throw a couple zeros up there. See if your bats can get something going against Chafin. Right now they have not had to answer for her, but I'm gonna keep this thing 3-0 right now if you can and see what you can do offensively. 0-2. That's a good take by Rudity, and it's one and two. And Chafin's had to throw just 17 pitches so far to get through a couple innings. I would think Justin Lewis and the emphasis is gonna be trying to work some at bats a little bit. And now an appeal to first base that came about two minutes after the pitch was thrown. Stanley Carey confirmed she did not go. Here's a one two. That's loop toward right field. It's down for a base hit. So just enough on that one from Rudity. She's reached both times up to bat. And now first and second for LSU with just one out here in the third. They have put multiple runners on every inning. Remember, they had the bases loaded and just one out in the first and didn't get anything across. Now they have made up for that and then some in these last couple frames. So now trying to break this thing open early. Hannah Carson looks at strike one. It's an LSU team that has had the ability to erupt at any moment this season. Out to right, shallow, and coming on to make the catch is Anderson. That's a big second out for Avery Payton. I'll say this, the contact has been significantly less this inning from LSU. I mean, Briggs didn't hit, you know, she obviously hit it out to center field in her homer, but hit it like a rocket, and you had the double as well last inning, so softer contacts. And now, it'll be Maddox McKee. She got all the scoring started for LSU in the second. With that slap double down the left field line, just sort of okey doked out there, and it dumped in perfectly for two bases and an RBI. 1 0 from Payton. And that is on the outside corner for strike one.
LSU is in 342 this year coming into today with the with runners in scoring position. That's second, make it third best in the SEC. There's a good off speed. Well, Avery paid and changing speeds well there. And she's ahead in the count one and two. Payton has struck out 18 coming into today. Misses there, two and two. It's 18 strikeouts in 30 innings. So it's not a overpowering set of stuff she has, but has induced for the most part weak contact so far today. Trying to get out of a couple on jam here in the third. 2-2. Two -two. That's hammered out to right field toward the line. Anderson lays out, almost got to it. And foul ground gave everything she had. I think she just got her glove under that and got a piece before it hit the turf. But obviously couldn't make the catch. Really nice effort, though, by her in right field. I mentioned it being a pretty athletic outfield for Justin Lewis and Nichols. And it'll be a 2-2. Two -two. Up the middle and through for a base hit. No wave Petty around third. She'll score, throw to third base, is in time. So Nichols gets the runner there in Rudity, but Penny scores on the RBI knock from McKee. Latest one came against Houston on February 24th. That pitch is on the outside corner, has gotten that call early, the outside corner to lefties. She's normally a pretty good strike thrower, and has shown good command thus far. Only the one walk to Cisco, five straight retired since. Champagne leads off for the Colonels, takes down and away. So Champagne, Kraus, and then Guazda do up here for the Colonels in the bottom part of the third. They're still seeking their first hit, and they have had just one base runner. Cisco's walk to lead off the game. 1 1. Swing and a miss. 1 and 2. Champagne, a native of Lockport, Louisiana, out of Central Lafouche High. One, two to her, that's off the plate. Two and two. She spent a year at Mississippi College, and now her third year in Thibodeau with the Colonels. And she has exploded in her senior campaign in 435. 10 for 23 so far this year with a couple of homers. Two, two. Swing and a miss. And the first strikeout. For Raylan Chafin, one away in the third. That is six straight retired for the junior right-hander. So Aaron Krause will dig in. Chafin's high in strikeouts in the game was seven in her debut against Pittsburgh. Krause shoots it foul. Krause comes off a sensational freshman campaign a season ago. She had 363, only had one homer, but drove in 30, had 18 extra base hits, reached base at about a 400 a clip. Check swing on a pitch that was pretty much over the heart, and it's 0-2. Krause ended up being all Southland first team, all Louisiana first team last year. In the hole here, 0-2. Chafin missed down and away that time. Just her 25th pitch so far. She has been very efficient. Shutting out Nichols so far, yet to allow a hit. 1-2. Grounder right side, fielded by Gutierrez. Tags the bag herself. And there's two away in the third. That is seven straight retired for Raylan Chafin. Here is Guazda. That's in there for strike one. Guazda hitting 254. She was four for four against Southern Miss last time out. 
Bounces one foul. She was probably one of those players annoyed that Colonel's had six days off. And you're in a, swinging a hot a bat that hot, you want to keep playing. She had three RBIs. She had two home runs. Oh, never mind. I was looking at the wrong sheet. <laughs> she did have two hits. Squazda did. That was Champagne who had the big game last time out. I knew she had a big day, but I, I, I was incorrect on the four hit. She was two for three in the game. Only home run for her this year came against Alcorn. That was back on February 21st. She actually was playing pretty well last year, hitting about 300 before her season ending injury suffered around the, the start of conference play. In an 0-2 hole here, Chafin has retired seven in a row. 0-2, tipped into the glove of Carson. It's a two strike out. Just got off to a 24-0 start. They were the final team to be undefeated in Division I softball. And then they dropped four in a row before beating Missouri to salvage the final game of their series over the weekend. Played three one-run games. They are looking good so far. Avery Payton has done a nice job of coming on and at least putting out a bit of the early fire for LSU. So she will face Allie Newland. It's top of the order for LSU here in the fourth. Fouled off one and one. LSU has scored in each of the last couple innings. They got three in the second, including a two-run homer from Sierra Briggs and an RBI double from Maddox McKee, who also had an RBI single in the third. So she's driven in two runs. That's off the plate, two and one. And Nichols' offense, meanwhile, not doing much of anything so far against a very good pitcher in Raylan Chafin. Came in with a 2-2-7 ERA, but it's a Nichols' offense that has been one hit two of their last three games. 2-1, that's drilled out to right, but right at Abby Anderson. Hard to hit a ball much harder than Allie Newland just did. And Nichols playing her perfectly, and Anderson barely had to move a muscle for out number one. Now Sierra Briggs tells you how good a player she is when you look at her line. She lays down a perfect sacrifice bunt her first time and then hits a two-run homer her next at-bat. So officially one for one today. There's a strike at the knees. LSU with four runs on four hits. Two of which are for extra bases. And three of their four hits have produced a run. One strike pitch. Slaps it toward the second baseman. Cisco has to hurry. Not in time. And there's the speed of Briggs. And she has shown the whole array offensively now. She's got another multi-hit day. And is her 12th multi-hit game of the season. And she is aboard with one out here in the fourth for Taylor Pleasants, who takes ball one. So a lot of speed on the bases now for LSU. Pleasants has reached twice, a hit, by, a hit by pitch and a walk. So yet to have to swing the bat so far. She takes a strike there. I mentioned she's a fifth year grad student from Houston. Been all SEC three times in her illustrious LSU career, among LSU's leaders in a bunch of categories. 1 1. Runner goes. Throw is caught on a bounce on a backhand by the shortstop, Guazda. Very low and wide throw from Rutherford and another stolen base for Sierra Briggs, who is now eight for nine stealing this year. And she moves to 47 for 54 stealing in her career. So a runner in scoring position for Pleasance with one down in the fourth. Here's the 2-1. On the outside corner, strike two. Pleasant sitting 344 with runners in scoring position. Popped foul and a slice and a play. And we'll do it again. Pleasant has just been so consistently good for this program. She's making her 223rd 
start here today. Every game for LSU career. 2-2. And now it's full. Feels like a big moment in this game. Nichols is down 4 nothing. have not produced an offensive hit yet. Avery Payton doing all she can do to limit this dangerous lineup. Briggs off second payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. So she pulled the string that time. That is filthy stuff from Avery Payton to ring up her first strikeout. Uh, one of the best hitters in the country. So now Raylene Gutierrez shoots it out to left field, right at Mackenzie Champagne. I'll tell you what, against McNeese in their last conference series. Now they faced one of the best pitchers in the conference, and Shaylen Sanders, who has been outstanding so far this year. They got the top of the order up here, and that is popped foul off the bat of Claire Cisco. And it's nothing and one. Jack Benjamin with you, bottom part of the fourth inning. LSU at 25 and four. They had lost four straight after starting 24-0 before beating Missouri to salvage the final game of the series in Columbia on Sunday. Colonels at 17 and 14. And that's off the plate, and it's one and one. Cisco walked her first time up. She is the only Colonel to reach base. And she was erased on a double play ball to finish off the first, so Chafin has faced the minimum still. Retired eight in a row. On a 1-1, that's on the hands, loop towards center field, Briggs on the run, makes the catch. It is so hard to get a ball down in front of her, past her, to the side of her. There's a reason why she's a back-to-back -back gold glover. And there's one away. She has a way of reading the ball so well. And I'll tell you what, they've had some really good center fielders at LSU. And she's among the best. The Andrews sisters always come to mind. I always think of Errol Leah and what she did in her time here. And of course, her sister as well. Chopper right side. Petty throws her out at first base. So Heflin is retired. And part of the problem here for Nichols, not just that they're not getting hits, but the pitch count is so low. It's just very low taxing innings to work through for Chafin. It's basically in cruise control right now. So after the leadoff walk to Cisco, she has retired 10 in a row. And now Molly Vandenbaum. Fouled off and on plate. Mentioned Chafin has already thrown a couple of shutouts this year against Pittsburgh and Houston. ERA sitting at 2.27. Oh, one to Vandenbaum. Runs inside. As a sophomore last year, Chavin's ERA was 2.74. As a freshman, it was 3.23. 1-1. Upstairs, swing and a miss. Good rise that time, and it's 1-2. and two. Normally, you look at someone who has a freshman season the way she did, and fouls it up, improving as a sophomore. You say, how much better can she get? Well, the answer is exponentially better. And Beth Serena's had a history of doing that with a lot of her pitchers. 1-2 to Vandenbaum. It's down in the way now, 2-2. Two two. Of course, Beth Serena, an All-American in her own right as a player. And an outstanding career pitching at Florida. Part of a 1998 SEC championship team. And it'll be a 2-2 two -two from Chafin. That is right down the middle, called strike three. She has set down 11. Uh, batter will be a player who pinch ran earlier, and Michaela Walker, and she takes down low. So Walker bats in place of Kelly Lynch, and bounces one foul. It is 5-6-7 here for LSU in the top part of the fifth. And 
Walker takes down and away. Walker hasn't had a ton of at-bats. Takes down low now, three and one. She's, on, she's 0 for seven so far in the season. Sophomore from Marietta, Georgia. Three one. And that is downstairs, ball four. So Walker draws a walk. <laughs> Pun intended. Payton, who worked uh, scoreless fourth inning, now in a little trouble here to start off the fifth. Pitch misses on Carly Petty, who was 0 for 2, did reach on a fielder's choice and came around to score in the third. Justin Lewis's team searching for answers. And I'll say this defensively, you take away a couple errors early on in the game at shortstop by Guazda, and they've been all right. The issues they've run into have all been predicated around free passes given out. And we mentioned they'd be good limiting the walks. The hit batters have really been an issue all season long. It's down low, now it's 2 0. I mean, this has been really the storyline against. Good teams. You look at the McNeese series, and, and now you look here at an LSU team. Too many free passes so far. They've already walked three. They've hit two. That's five base runners right there. Petty takes right down the middle for strike one. LSU, I mentioned they're 20 0 in non conference games this year. They're averaging winning those games by about four runs per. 2 1 is a bunch that goes back to the netting behind home plate. And it's 2 and 2. Last time LSU lost a non conference regular season game, got to go back to April 18th of last year at McNeese. Cowgirls beat them in Lake Charles. 2 2. Rocket shot in the right field and a base hit. First hit today for Penny. It's number six for the LSU offense. And they're in business here in the fifth, first and second, and nobody out. Good piece of hitting there by Carly Petty. And now the pitch misses to Mackenzie Rudity for ball one. Rudity's had a nice day at the plate already. Was hit by pitch, came around to score in the second, and then singled to right field in the third. Nobody out top of the fifth already, 4 0. Popped up, shallow center, coming on Heflin, makes the catch. One away. And that's a big first out to get for Payton. Out to center field, hit very softly, and a nice running catch made by Claire Cisco. So from her second base position, range is over to make the play. And prevents a possible hit off the bat of Carson to what? Uh, so it'll be up to Maddox McKee with two outs. And you're never safe with two outs, especially with McKee up there. Who cuts and misses, good off speed that time. Mention how dangerous this LSU offense can be. We've got 67 two out RBIs entering today among the SEC's leaders. A one. And misses down and in. McKee has had a terrific day at the plate. Two for two. An RBI double and an RBI single. 
And those are both hits that came with runners in scoring position after entering the season 0 for 3 in such spots. 1-1 one, one is upstairs, 2-1. and one. LSU today, two for five with two outs. McKee has already got just her second multi hit game of the season. Takes downstairs, and now it's three and one. Remember, she's the nine hitter, so Beth Tarina getting production from the bottom part of her order. And Carson in the eight spots, 0 for three, but six, seven, and nine, even include the five spot, they've been very productive. And McKee, two for two with two RBI. 3-1. And walked her. And that means the bases are juiced for Allie Newlands. And this is not who you want to be facing in this kind of spot. So two more walks in the inning for Nichols pitching. Four on the day. Six free passes with a couple hit batters. Bases full, two outs in the fifth. And the pitch to Newlands, fouled away 0-1. Newland, a senior from Bremen, Georgia. All SEC first team last season. Came into today 375, five homers, 27 batted in. Takes off the outside, one and one. Newland one for three with the bases loaded this year. 1-1. One, one. Got it in on the hands just enough. Good job there by Avery Payton. So she is a strike away from working her way out of a major jam here in the fifth. LSU has loaded the bases for the second time this game. Remember, Nichols got out of it in the first. Trying to pull another Houdini act here in the fifth. 1-2 from Payton and Newlands. That's down low. LSU this season as a team, nearly 400 with the bases loaded with a couple of grand slams. New one's got three career grand slams. 2-2 two, two with two outs. Fouled away again. It'll be another 2-2, bases full, two outs in the fifth. And Payton deals to Newlands, tipped again at home play. This has been a great battle. LSU is trying to break this thing wide open in the fifth. Nichols hoping that they can get out of this jam and then find a way to get the bats rolling in the home half. Running out of time. First time they've hosted LSU since 2014. Seventh ranked team in the country in control. Another 2 2. Fouled away again. That one is onto the street. And we are going to see an 11th pitch in the at bat. This has been a marathon at bat. Hayden and Newland. Space is full, two outs in the fifth. Another 2-2, two -two, and she got her upstairs. A rise up and away. Big strikeout. With the bases loaded, but they do a four on the board. Nichols without a hit so far against Raylan Schaefer. Four, five, six, starting with Alexa Poche, and she takes upstairs for ball one. That was her 40th pitch for Chafin. And Poche takes down and away. They start putting it in perspective. The Colonel pitching staff has already had to throw upwards of 100 pitches. She has been very, very efficient. Poche lined to left her first time. 2-0, that's on the hands, popped up, left field, charging in to make the catch is Newland for out number one.
So the only batter to reach so far for Nichols was Cisco, a walk to lead off the game. That's 12 straight retired since. For Raylan Chafin. There's Riley Rutherford. Popped out in foul ground on a sensational play by catcher Hannah Carson. Her counterpart behind the plate. That was all the way back in the second inning. Off speed misses outside one and one. Rutherford entered today at 258. Two homers and 13 driven in. She was on a McClellan Community College team last year. 1-1. One, one. And has fouled off. McClellan Community College last year was the NJCAA Division I softball runner-up. And she hit 382 on that team. With 18 home runs and nearly 60 RBI, she was second team all-conference. Had an outstanding career at the JUCO level. And now trying to carry it over to Division I. Has to protect the two strikes. 1-2 from Chafin. It's off the plate, two and two. Again, this is a Nichols offense. While they've had their moments this year, they have struggled of late to really produce anything. They had 10 hits against Southern Miss last time out, but one, two of the prior three. Two, two is tipped just with the glove of the catcher, Carson. Again, Shaylin Sanders was exceptional facing them. Colonels were also limited to one hit against Houston back on February the 15th. And they went two for 18 against LSU on February the 8th. They ended up two for 18 in that game. And they are 0 for 12 today. 2-2. Two -two. That's just low, 3-2. For those doing math at home, by the way, that's 2 for 30 in two games so far against LSU. So Justin Lewis's team is just trying to get a base runner right now. Any way they can. It'll be a payoff pitch coming from Raylan Chafin to Riley Rutherford. Here it is. And she hit her. Stops a string of 12 straight retired for Chafin. And the Colonels finally have their first base runner since the opening batter of the game in Cisco. Now Justin Lewis, knowing the importance of where Nichols is in this game, has Abby Anderson up. They will pinch run for Rutherford at first base with Leyland Stern. A Sturm into pinch run. Lead off runner aboard. Bottom part of the fifth, 4 0 LSU. Anderson checks her swing and Take strike one. 39 pitches entering the inning for Chafin. We talked about how efficient she had been. And last at bat had 10 of them. So that's by far the best at bat a Colonel has worked. 0 1 to Anderson. Fouled off 0 2. Chafin has had some outstanding outings this year. She's had outstanding outings in her career. Had a three-hit complete game against Pittsburgh to start her season February 10th. A two-hit complete game against Houston on February 24th. Has not thrown a no-hitter in her career. 0-2 to Anderson. It's down and away. She's got eight career complete games, does Chafin. Today is her 30th career start. ERA for her career is about 2 8. 1 2. Runs inside and Anderson 2 and 2. All of a sudden, the at bats are starting to get far more productive here for Nichols. And even if you're not having success after it, at least something's coming about. Pinch runner Sturm off first. Bottom five with one out. And the 2 2. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Chief, and that is number four. And there's two away in the fifth. Yeah. 
So she has faced 15. She has retired 13. And the pitch misses to Mackenzie Champagne. We were talking earlier about Champagne and the day she put together against Southern Miss last time out, March 20th, with two homers. 1 0 is at the knees on the outside for strike one. Only she and Vandenbout have had multi home run games in this season. She had hit one career home run her first two years and then hits two in one game. 1 1 pitch. Runner goes, throw to second base is high, and there's a steal for Leyland Stern. So they bring her on to run, and she swipes her second bag of the year on two tries. True freshman from Seguin, Texas, and of Navarro High School. Also stole a base against Charleston Southern in February, and she's in scoring position. 2 1. Swing and a miss, 2 and 2. This is the first time today that Nichols has had a runner reach second base. Champagne, who for the season is three for seven runners in scoring position, trying to deliver Nichols' first hit and first run. 2-2 two -two from Chafin, fouled away. Well, if nothing else, Nichols has had significantly better at-bats here in the fifth than the first four innings. Zeros across the board so far for the Colonels outside of the error column where they've got two of them. They've only had two base runners. An LSU pitching staff that is among the elite in all of college softball. 2-2, fouled back again. A couple of really nice at-bats worked this inning by Colonels. Something you saw last year in that dramatic win improvement was how much better the quality of at-bats were. Colonels aren't walking a ton this year, but they are striking out less for the most part. Another 2-2 to Champagne. That's off the plate, 3-2. and two. On deck is Aaron Krause. All-conference a year ago in preseason All-Southlands. Sturm off second, stole that second base bag a moment ago. Payoff pitch from Chief into Champagne. And missed down low, she walked her. So a couple of base runners in this inning for Nichols after Chafin had retired 12 in a row. First time Nichols has had multiple base runners on in the same inning. And now Aaron Krause in a big spot. All of a sudden Nichols in position to make this thing a game. Got to deliver at some point. Krause fouls away the first pitch 0-1. You don't know how many opportunities you'll get against a pitcher like this to have some traffic on the bases and come through. And you know, Kraus may be the answer for Nichols here. Oh, one. That's it sharply down the left field line and foul grounds. And making the running catch is Newlands. Well, she came on in a really tough spot all the way back in the second inning and has limited the damage significantly to just a run since. Banner is Sierra Briggs. And she takes a strike to start off the top part of the sixth for LSU. 2-3-4 for the seventh ranked Tigers. On top of Nichols, so one showing bunt, pulled it back. LSU, of course, out of the SEC, where they were picked third in the preseason poll. And that is no small feat when you consider the depth in that league. The SEC has 13 teams. To put it in perspective, here's a 1-1. And a bunt is fouled by Briggs, 1-2. 11 of the 13 SEC teams are ranked in the top 25, which, frankly, it almost feels low. It, it almost feels like every week they're going to have all 13 in there, <laughs> considering how strong the league is. And, the way they beat each other up and, and that sort of thing. But 11 to 13 is pretty much how it always is with how deep this league is. 1 2. It's outside 2 and 2. LSU is 5 and 4 right now in the SEC. They swept their opening series against Kentucky. That was part of their 24 0 start. They won 
their opener against Ole Miss and then lost the four in a row before beating Missouri. So they're five and four. They're sitting tied for fifth. 2-2 two -two, popped up. Sliding in foul ground, and then I get out of play. Wazda gave it a nice run, couldn't quite get to it. LSU has made 17 consecutive regional appearances, but again, they have not been to the Women's College World Series since 2017. They will resume SEC play this weekend against Texas A&M. That'll be in Baton Rouge. Two and two, it stays after the foul ball by Briggs. Working a good at bat here against Payton. A&M is ranked 11th in the country right now, so they've got them for three at home. And it'll be Thursday, Friday, Saturday with Easter on Sunday, and then ULM in a midweek before they go to Gainesville. Two of their next three SEC series at home. 2-2 two, two again, foul ball again. We've seen both offenses waste a lot of pretty good pitches here tonight. Avery Payton is certainly holding her own against one of the best offenses in the country. Sophomore from Summit, Mississippi. Deals another 2-2 to Briggs. And the off-speed misses down low and it's full. Payton last year's ERA was at seven. 12 appearances, five starts. Opponents at 370 against her. She, her numbers are better across the board. Payoff is fouled back. She entered today down to a 4-4-3 ERA, a 3-2 and two record, and opponents hitting only 250 against her. So she did walk 11 batters last year in 25 innings and has already walked 11 this year. But her control's been pretty good for the most part today. Payoff pitch to Briggs. Fouled off again. I mean, this is what a really good leadoff hitter typically does. Spoil a lot of really good pitches. Briggs, a fifth-year grad student from Yorba Linda, California. Had the two-run homer back in the second, an infield single her last time in the fourth. Another payoff pitch is low. That was a 13-pitch at bat, won by Briggs. And she reaches for the third time in four plate appearances today. Taylor Pleasants now. Down low for ball one. Briggs, by the way, just drew her 13th walk against 12 strikeouts this year. Nearly everybody in the LSU lineup has walked more than they've struck out. 1 0 to Pleasance. And that's in there for strike one. And Briggs, of course, always a threat to run. He's already stolen a base today. One one to Pleasance. Down low, two and one. Pleasant sensors today, ninth in the SEC in RBI. 31 driven in so far this year. That's hit sharply right into the glove of Guazda short. <laughs> Another laser beam. And the Colonels right on it. Just a smile from Guazda. That's good reaction time. You know, typically they call third base the hot corner. In, in softball, the entire infield is typically, the, it's like the hot infield. You've got to be ready at all times to how hard the ball can be hit. Especially Pleasants, typically a solid exit speed for her. And one away after the lineout. And ball one on Raylene Gutierrez. I mean, Pleasants just absolutely smoked that softball. Gutierrez, another California native. Got a couple on this team, three in total. 1-0, hit sharply, that's in the right field, a base hit. Fielded by Anderson, tosses back in quickly, good stop by Quazda around second base. And a base knock for Raylene Gutierrez, who's now reached base safely in 16 consecutive games. Gutierrez, the 
one player in the top four in the order who hadn't really done a whole lot offensively gets in on the act. She's now reached twice today in four at bats. And now ball one. And Michaela Walker. Walker walked her first time up in the fifth. Initially came on as a pinch runner. 1-0 is hammered. Deep left field. If it's fair, it is way gone. And it is an absolute moonshot for a three-run blast for Michaela Walker. The sophomore from Marietta, Georgia, gets her first career home run with LSU. And the Tigers have blown it wide open, 7-0 in the sixth. Just inside the foul pole for Walker. It's her second career extra base hit. It's her first hit of the season. It had been 0 for 8. 0 for 7, actually. So her first hit of the season is a long ball for a homer. It's only her fifth career hit in 23 at-bats. What a moment for her. Hard hit ball towards second base. This is going to be a tough play at second for Cisco, And she can't get there in time to beat out Carly Petty, who reaches an infield hit for her. So LSU's offense, which hadn't used the long ball a whole lot this year, has now produced a couple of home runs here in Dividum. Pitch misses up and away to Mackenzie Rudity. She is one for two. Popped out to center field her last time. Out to deep center fields. Heflin drifts back and has it for out number two. And Avery Payton, before allowing that homer, had done a really nice job of limiting hard contact for the most part. And she allows the home run there to Walker, who gets her first collegiate homer. Hannah Carson now taking ball one. Carson was all Big Ten at Michigan back in 2022. Takes a strike on an off speed. She played four years there, was a grad transfer this year. She's from Weidman, Michigan, out of Mount Pleasant High School. And a walk-off two-run single earlier this year against Oklahoma State. Handled some injuries. Actually went down with a knee injury earlier last year. That pitch is low and no chance for Rutherford to throw to second base to try to get Petty. She's got a steal. It's actually Carson's sixth year of college softball. Again, had last year cut short due to injury. 2-2 is upstairs. Another veteran presence for Beth Serena in this lineup. It's the kind of depth added that is crucial considering, you know, obviously they thought coming in Danica Coffey was going to be a big piece of this lineup. But now that you don't have her and she's out for the year with a knee injury, another piece Beth Serena can use. This one popped up to shallow center. Heflin has the final couple put out to the sixth. But LSU tacks on three more via the long ball. A three-run blast. And that ends right there with a base hit to right field. So Samantha Guazda gets Nichols' first hit today. And taking the Colonels. 17 hitters, but finally they get someone on base. And now Claire Sisko, someone on base via the hit, I should say. That is a fourth base runner. 
Bunt here, Cisco. Bare hand play, throw to first is in time. It's well done by Maddox McKee over to third. Really nice play there. Presence of mind to bare hand and fire over to first. Helping out Chafin. Up to second base goes Guazda. Cisco with the sack butt. And now Reagan Heflin. And the final couple put outs defensively back in the top of the six. Sends one out to deep left center. Briggs is back and makes a running catch on the warning track. Tagging to third goes Guazda. A long fly out off the bat of Heflin. Nearly carried that one all the way out of the park. And Briggs, as she often does, running it down in the gap for out number two. Again, she very rarely makes a mistake. Across her now 227 career games. She's made four errors. And that hits the padding of Molly Vandenbout. She'll take first base, second hit batter today for Raylan Chafin. So now first and third for Nichols with two outs. First time they have had a player reach third base today. Trying to avoid being shut out for a second time this season by LSU. Pinch runner on for Nichols is Carmela Muchilli. So Carmela Muchilli pinch runs for Vandenbout, and here is Alexa Poche. It's outside for ball one. Poche is 0 for 2, lined out to left, and then popped out to left. So he's gone the opposite way twice against Chafin. First time Colonels have had a runner at third. 1-0. That's a good off speed. A fake to second base from Hannah Carson and no throw. So up to second goes Muchilli and now two in scoring position with two outs for Nichols. See if Poche can deliver their first run. 1-1 one, one from Chafin. It's outside 2-1. and one. Poche a year ago hit 342 with five homers, 40 driven in. Down season this year by her standards, hitting 275 entering today with a couple homers and 13 batted in. She's always been pretty productive with runners in scoring position, though, and no stranger this year to doing that. That is on the outside corner. A little bit of a delayed call there from Hoy Cook. Two balls, two strikes, two down, bottom six. Nichols trying to get on the board. Chafin trying to keep the shutout going. On a 2-2, Poche fouls it off. Chafin has what he wants. And what she wants, Poche awaits, and another 2-2. Grounded up the middle and throw for a base hit. Into score, Guazda behind her, Muchilli, she's safe. Throw to second base, and Poche's in there. And a two RBI knock for Alexa Poche. The Colonels answer back here in the sixth. A little bit of clutch hitting from their all-conference first baseman. Another look here. A really nice piece of two strike hitting from Poche. It brings in a couple. There will be no shutout today. And that is the first time this year that Nichols has scored a run against LSU. And the three umpires are discussing whether she was safe at second base or not. It looked like a pretty good slide to the outside part of the base. 
And they do confirm the call of safe. So Nichols delivers with a big two out hit. That is their first hit today with two outs. They are now one for five. And Poche with a couple of RBIs, her 14th and 15th on the season. And all of a sudden, the comeback colonel's starting to get in gear. Rutherford pops it up. Shallow center. Briggs settles under and has it for the final out. That's to mean that Michaela Walker, but for the most part, has been very good. And a bunt to start things off from Maddox McKee goes foul. 9-1-2 here for LSU. As we play in the top part of the seventh innings, the Colonels are going to need, if it stays at this score, at least five to extend the game, which may be too tall a task, but you do love to see the fight regardless from Justin Lewis's team. The 0-1 fouled away 0-2. I think that's part of what he's brought to this culture. Just the resiliency and fight of this group. And a year ago, they had a number of great comeback wins. They were gritty in one and two run games. No quit in this group. The 0-2. It's the respect factor and why they were picked third in the south of the preseason poll. Maddox McKee has been excellent in the ninth spot tonight. Two RBI, two hits, and a walk. 0-2. Lifted out to shallow center fields, and it drops in front of Heflin for a base hit. That is a three-hit day for Maddox McKee in the ninth spot. Her first career three-hit game. She had six hits and 27 at-bats entering today. And oh, by the way, she's also doubled her RBI number of one coming in with two. Outstanding game for the true freshman from Montgomery, Texas. Figured it was a matter of time for her. Had such a decorated high school career. Hit 527 as a senior at Lake Creek High. And she's starting to put it all together now in game number 30 of LSU's season in 2024. Newland out to left, and that will fall for a base hit in front of Mackenzie Champagne. Back-to-back -back singles. McKee in the nine spot, Newland in the leadoff spot. She's got her first hit today. And first and second and no outs for Sierra Briggs, who has yet to be retired, not by a sacrifice today. And the sack bunt her first time up. Two-run homer, infield single, and a walk since. Shows a bunt and pulls it back, taken up and away for ball one. Again, LSU this year, 20 wins, no losses in non-conference games. It's only the eighth time, actually only the third time they played a midweek game. 1-0 is on the outside corner, strike one. Of course, they've played in a bunch of those huge events early on in the season. You, you don't necessarily count those as midweek games, but they've obviously played a, a lot of big tournaments and events, and most of their games coming on weekends so far. One one to Briggs, a bunt again. Fielded the third by Kraus, fires to first base, just got her in time. A really nice bare hand play there by Kraus. It's a two in scoring position with just one out for Taylor Pleasance. Give a second sack bunt today to Briggs. And as speedy a player as there is in the country, hustling down the lot. Pleasance takes down and away for ball one. She's hitless in two at bats, did reach her first couple times up via the hit by pitch and a walk. One zero. -oh. They call her TP. I think you can understand why the initials. And then again, native of Houston, Priest is an All SEC, coming off three straight All SEC selections. Also been on the SEC All-Defensive team the last couple of years. 2-0 to her. That's out to deep center field. Back goes Heflin, reaches up and makes the over-the-shoulder catch. What a play in center fields. It'll score a run for LSU. 
Martin as Newland comes in, but take a bow out in center, Reagan Heflin. She robbed what would have surely been a two-run scoring play. Outstanding over the shoulder grab. Easy work for McKee to jog in and score. I said Newland, it was McKee who tagged up and scored. And LSU's lead is eight to two. That is terrific defense. Pitch misses to Raylene Gutierrez. RBI for Pleasance, by the way. Their team leading 32nd as Gutierrez fouls it off. Give Avery Payton a lot of credit in this game, coming on in a tough spot. LSU had that three-run second inning. She allowed just one run over the next three frames. But then the three-run homer from Michaela Walker, who notched her first collegiate home run. By the way, really good note I, I was handed earlier by uh, Keontae, the LSU SID. Let me know, Abigail Savoy actually had her first career hit be a home run earlier this year as well. That was against Austin Peay, so something for the Tigers about having their first hit be a home run this year or their first career hit be a home run. Two Tiger players this year have had their first hit of the season be a homer, and one of them, their first career hit in Savoy be a homer. Be a 3-1 to Gutierrez, and she smoked it. Deep to right field, back goes Anderson over her head, and it hits off her and rolls to the wall. Another run in for LSU, and to third base goes Gutierrez with a triple. Well, it was going to be a tough play all the way around for Anderson and Wright. Did everything she could to find it, but couldn't quite squeeze it in. And Gutierrez motors into third base with an RBI triple. <laughs> And the Nichols defense has made some great plays and a couple they've had chances on. Meanwhile, we mentioned Walker hit the home run her last time up. See if she can produce an encore. LSU's lead was 7 0. Nichols got the two runs in the bottom part of the sixth to break through finally against Raylan Chafin, and then LSU has pushed the lead right back to a touchdown and an extra point. It's down low, one and one. Mentioned Michaela Walker and her home run her last time up. And of Marietta, Georgia, Marietta High School products. Only played 16 games last year. Had four hits. 1 1 to her is fouled off. Nearly hit Carly Petty in the on deck circle. She had 400, did Walker every year in high school. 578 is a senior. One two from Payton. And that's down and away now. Two and two. Nichols is going to have six, seven, eight due up in the seventh inning. Assuming Raylan Chafin comes back out for LSU, which we figure she will. That's down and in. Now the count's full. LSU's gotten really good production all throughout the lineup, as they often do. It'll be a payoff pitch here to Walker from Payton. Foul back. So we mentioned LSU resumes SEC play over the weekend. Nichols will resume Southland play after a week off last weekend. They're sitting right now four and two in the Southlands. That's in fourth place. They're picked third in the preseason poll. They're at Lamar and Beaumont over the weekend. Payoff pitch. And that just missed down and away on Walker, who draws her second walk. And she's had three plate appearances. Two walks sandwiched with a home run between. Mm -hmm. 
This home game for Nichols closes out a, a seven game homestand. Of course, six games between six days between games. And then they'll have four straight on the road. They finish with Southern Miss in the road trip. Pitch in there for a strike to Carly Petty. Colonel's next home date will be against Texas A&M Commerce. That is a doubleheader Friday, April 5th, and then finale of the series on Saturday, April 6th. A one. And now the count evens up. Grounded softly towards third, cut off there, a spinning play, and it was dropped at first base by Poche. A good play by Krause. Throw was a little bit low. And LSU brings in another run, giving RBI to Petty. And it'll be an infield single off the bat of Petty. She gets her third hit today and her first RBI. So LSU now has 10 runs on the board. And is the seventh time in 2024 they have done that. And they are playing in their 30th game. And it looks like they will get a pinch hitter up to bat in this spot. And it'll be Jaden Leno. Freshman from Marietta, Georgia. Same hometown as Walker. Takes down and away. She's out of Pope High School. So she bats for Rudity in the seventh spot. 10 2 LSU, two down in the top of the seventh inning. And Leno takes down an in ball two. Hundred and twenty three pitches now for Payton. It's by far a season high for her. And it is, I believe, a career high as well. And she didn't go more than three innings last year, so. Highest outing before this was 88. 3-0 count on Leno, rolls it softly, fielded by the pitcher in her glove still, and she tosses over to Poche for the final out. But finally broke through with a leadoff single from Guazda. They got a two-run single from Poche. Made it a 7-2 game, and LSU responds right away. A bouncer off the bat of Anderson right to the first baseman, Gutierrez. And that is out number one. Pitch misses to Mackenzie Champagne. Raylan Chafin has been nothing short of sensational here tonight. Just the two runs allowed on the single from Poche. Runs a heater inside on the hands of Champagne, and it is 2 0. Oh. She's looking for her third complete game of the season. Again, she's a junior and making her 30th start today. This would be her ninth career complete game. Bouncer right side, gloved there by Petty, throws the first two away. And this really has been a masterpiece from their junior right-hander. And she is now one out away. So Nichols is going to pinch hit her and Gabby Higby. Sophomore from Dewey, Oklahoma. 
transferred in from Tulsa in the offseason. She's at 221 so far this year. Does have four home runs. Four of her 15 hits are home runs. And hasn't popped. Nichols down its final out. And that is fouled back. Nothing in one. And it'll be an all one from Chafin. Fouled away 0 and 2. So Chafin is one strike away from her ninth career complete game. The 0 2 fouled away. Tigers have already reached the 10 run plateau for the seventh time this year. They've won all of those games. Another 0 2 from Chafin. Down and away. Higby trying to keep the Colonels alive. Just two hits today for Nichols. One two from Chief and Higby. Swing and a miss. Got her on the heater upstairs. And Raylan Chafin finishes off her third complete game of the season.